liked commented and above all subscribed and if you have not and you're new on this channel we request you to do that please just subscribe to this channel and above all leave a comment and don't forget to leave a notification to notify you anytime we upload a new video so today our interest is uh, another piece of history and that is Ngoni invasion into East Africa how and why and where did they come from our interest on this channel is to let you uh, understand the people of East Africa the peopling of East Africa and how they came to be so our interest today is Ngoni invasion into East Africa so what do we I'd like to discuss today who were the Ngoni? We need to understand who are these people. Origin of the Ngoni people, reason to why they migrated, and effects of the Ngoni invasion to East Africa, quite a number, as we shall see. And then factors for the success of the Ngoni invasion. It's not easy to invade a certain area. So we want to look at the factors that uh, help them to succeed in taking over East Africa. Moving on. So we're saying, who were the Ngoni? Ngoni are Bantu speaking people. And these are people from South Africa a long time. They lived in Zulu land. And uh, the relatives of the Zulu people, the Ndwandwe, the, the Mtwe, Mtwe, they are believed to have settled there. Not believed actually. They still have their grand uh, relatives around that region. So KwaZulu Natal, that province, uh, the Zulu land, not until the expansion policy of King Shaka. Remember the great Shaka, uh, king of the Zulu people, who actually tried as much as possible to consolidate his power in the region and expand uh, his uh, territory and chiefdom around that region. So this didn't give an, uh, the, 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 the Ngoni people a good uh, feeling and a comfortable uh, stay in that region. So they were forced to migrate to northern parts of uh, uh, Africa. So that's moving from south, moving northwards, and that's leaving KwaZulu Natal, moving into areas of Mozambique, Zan Zimbabwe, and then into Tanzania area, southern part of Tanzania. So that's how they migrated. So we're Anguni, these are Bantu speaking people, and they're part of our relatives, and uh, they used to stay in KwaZulu Natal. And where did they leave KwaZulu Natal? Uh, one of the biggest factors is the expansion policy of King Shaka. King Shaka. Uh, the, the, the Zulu king, the great Zulu king. So we're moving on. Course of the Nguni movement. So we are saying uh, the Nguni uh, moved uh, in different uh, kind of groups and the Nguni moved northwards across Mozambique, Angola into eastern Central Africa. Their movement was characterized by raids, destruction of property and devastation of villages as we shall see. Why? Why were they doing this? Because as we said, they were invading the area the areas where they migrated to had people who had settled around that area and actually if you look at this uh, this arrow right here it's telling us their origin KwaZulu Natal that's the Natal province as they moved northwards crossing river Rimpopo and then to river Zambez or Zambez area into the Mponde and then Cheptea and then Songea moving up and then Fipa as we shall see in Tanzania, Ujiji, Tabora area. So this is a brief sketch that tries to tell us how these people migrated from KwaZulu Natal into East Africa. And we're saying that their migration was characterized with kind of a terror, kind of destruction of property and devastation of villages as they were warlike mongers, as we shall see, having got this trade from uh, uh, the Zulu kind of uh, uh, behavior and uh, the Zulu or the Shaka's army force and then the tactics of fighting as we shall see. So we're saying uh, the course, this is just a brief understanding on how they moved step by step uh, from the place of origin into East Africa. And we're saying uh, the Nguni left Zulan in two different groups under military leaders, uh, which were known as the Ndunas, uh, the heads of the military. Uh, and uh, one was led by Zwange Ndava as we shall see and then the other by Maputo so these were the two leaders that uh, led these uh, Angoni people to move away in such of peaceful areas from the hostile and the period of tra t t the trouble and terror caused by the king of the Zulu Shaka Zulu and the period was known as Mofekani so looking at this sketch that we have here you can see the group that was led by the Zwangendaba 
and then we have the Mapenzini and then Mahololo as they reach the Mahol region then we have the Guangala as we shall see and then Maseko so this briefly helps us to understand how they moved it's quite a long distance all the way from KwaZulu Natal into East Africa uh, as they cross different countries uh, we see Mozambique we see Z Z Z Z Z Zambia uh, then we, we proceed on to Malawi we see them crossing over to southern Tanzania and then central bit of Africa so group one as we said was led by uh, the chief which is uh, Ndunas and this great man was known as Zwang Endava. So the first group was led by Chief Zwang Endava in 1831. They had destroyed Shona settlement in Zimbabwe. They crossed to Zambi Zambez River in 1835 and traveled through Malawi in 1840. They reached Ufipa Plateau in South Tanganyika, uh, defeated the Fipa and settled in their in their fertile land as looking uh, back we have seen all this region. You see what I was trying to say Fipa as they crossed into FIPA and settled around this region. So we are saying this group was led by the great gentleman known as Wang Endava, who was uh, a great leader that led these people out of the terror of Sheka Zulu as an expansion policy. So moving on, we are saying, unfortunately, Wang Endava died in 1848 and his group split into five small groups. The three returned southwards to Zambia and Malawi. While the two the Tuta and Gwangala remained in East Africa as we have seen earlier. The Tuta led by Mpale moved northwards into the land of the Hololo. However, they were drive, uh, dr driven out by the Hololo and eventually settled in northern Tanganyika, northwest of Tabora. We have just seen these regions here, taking you briefly back. So we are seeing Hololo is this region here. Unfortunately, they were driven out. The Hololo were great people and forced them out. Then we have seen this other group, the Guangala, uh, in this region. So this is what we are trying to say here. That when he died, there was leadership vacuum and the groups had to split into two groups, uh, three groups actually. Where we see uh, one that returned to Zambia and Malawi. The other two, Tuta and Guangala, remained in East Africa and moved uh, north. Uh, northwards into the land of Hololo. However, they were driven out by the Holo people, eventually settled in northern Tanganyika and northwest Tabora, as we have seen. So, the gentleman we see right there is Zwang Endava, born in 18, 1785, was a great gentleman. The ladies' people, all the way from KwaZulu Natal into East Africa, unfortunately, he died, but he's still remembered in the history of the Ngoni people up to then. So, moving on from Mufipa. The Gwangala, led by the Zulu Gama, that's now their leader, moved eastwards and absorbed the Hehe and Sago people around that region. In 1860, the Gwangala reached Songea, uh, where they met the Maseko Ngoni, defeated the Maseko, drove them out of the Songea region, and settled in that region there uh, that we have just seen there. So we are looking at uh, the Maseko reaching the Songhea and driving away I'm telling you uh, because of that strong military force forced these people to move away from this region and they later settled in this region looking at this map here so uh, we are also saying the Gwangala led by the Zulu Gama moved eastwards and absorbed the Hehe people looking at our map here do you see this area here this is uh, the Gwangala and these are the Hehe people yeah, so this is the area where we see uh, the split, the dispersal point, uh, uh, having uh, lost their leader, that is Wang Endava. We see different three groups moving different uh, areas as we just described earlier. Uh, moving on, so we are saying the second group was led by Maseko, Nguni, led by, sorry, uh, Maseko was known as Maseko, led by Maputo. They moved by the eastern side of Lake Malawi and settled in Songea. Yeah, they intermarried with the local, especially the Yao, and settled in this region. So we are saying this other second group, uh, known as the Maseko Nguni, led by Maputo, moved a little southwards and settled around Lake Malawi and the Songhea region. Moving on. So having defeated by the Guangala in Songhea, Maputo led his people southwards across River Ruvuma to North Mozambique 
Others fled to northern, uh, to Moro, Morogoro, where they became to be known as the Buga. The rest moved to Tunguru, Tunduru, uh, Masai and the Niwale region. So that's how we see uh, this other group finally settling in. So we are saying the Guangala and Songea, uh, uh, Maputo ladies people, and then southwards. Uh, River Ruma, North Mozambique, uh, basing on the sketch that we have here, the Rivuma area around this region. So this is where they finally settle and then at peace set in that region. This was all a group led by uh, the great man Zwang Endeavor. So moving on. Meanwhile, some of the Nguni speakers in the same period migrated to other parts of East Africa and Central Africa like the Ndevede people today residing in Zimbabwe. They were led by Chief Muzuli Kazi. Uh, these are some of the other Angoni people that he moved away from the terror of uh, the great leader of the Zulu, Shaka. So another group from South Africa under the leadership of Muzuli Kazi moved northwards across the Rankens Park Mountains. They settled in Transvaal Republic due to the Zulu and the Boer pressure. Uh, who are the Boers? These are the Dutch people who um, settled in South Africa. Uh, as early as 16s around that region and they established settlement there they were later known as the Afrikaners so the pressure they, they forced these people to move uh, they wanted to take over their land so forcing them to move so they were forced to cross river in Popo and settled in present day Zimbabwe where they found uh, they founded a famous Indivede kingdom so this is where now we see this uh, group settling and uh, finally having peace in that region so we're saying, what are the reasons that forced these people to migrate or to move away and invade East Africa? So we're saying there are quite a number. And uh, one, we have looked at uh, the, the Mufekani period, uh, the character of King Shaka. King Shaka was a great leader around that region at that time, the 1820s. And uh, he was in the drive of expanding his kingdom. The great, the great history around Shaka Zulu is amazing. So we're saying... He was an aggressive, very aggressive, and attacked and next every nearby territory. When he attacked in the next part of the Nguni, uh, sorry, the Ngoni society, uh, the Nguni group decided to move away in search of other peaceful areas, and thus they force we see them moving to East Africa. So another another point there can be shortage of land uh, because now it's an agriculture kind of people and they need land to to do that kind of agriculture so the overpopulation and shortage of land in that area might have forced them to migrate into uh, east africa and invade east africa and that's 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 caused by population pressure into the south africa and the kwazulu region so that seemed to have caused that then the other is the good migration was caused by the mufekani period a period of trouble that uh, we see a lot of trouble in the region of KwaZulu Natal, and then we see these people being forced to move away. So the competition for profitable trade around that region, uh, they said, no, if this is so much competitive, we 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 can move away. The number of societies around the coast competed for pro uh, profitable trade with the Portuguese. The early foreign people had moved around the coast of East Africa and the South Africa area. So we are seeing societies like uh, the Mtuetwa. Zwinde and Kosa, among others, were a little tougher than the Nguni and decided to move away from this area and settle into East Africa. And then the other, we can say grazing lands. Uh, we see different people wanting lands for grazing. And then the strong army of Shakazula and soldiers who terrorized the Nguni people forced them to move and uh, search for peaceful areas, thus invading. East Africa. Uh, the other is epidemic diseases. Uh, we have seen this quite happening so much in the history, in the ancient history, uh, that uh, diseases force people to move away from their cradle land in such of peaceful areas. Uh, diseases like smallpox, sleeping sickness, uh, Nagana affecting the animals, mentioned but a few. The other would be internal pressure, uh, internal pressure within the Angolan people. So some Nguni migrated due to the internal civil wars in their own homeland, in their own homeland that forced them to move uh, in such of peaceful areas 
and that's that's why we see them moving into the great part of east africa and then northern part of uh south africa i uh, was also saying the natural calamities uh Bene in those days the the drought the flood and many others might have forced these people to move in such uh, of uh, peaceful areas the other could have been uh they wanted uh i believe also to to move and see the world out there so most cases will bring out this aspect of love for adventure this might have forced them to move and then in such a different area but predominantly the biggest factor here is the expansion policy of king shaka zulu around that area in the 1820s where we see the the era of trouble so people are forced to move in such a peaceful areas so how did they succeed in invading east africa in, in trying to settle in these new areas where they migrated to remember these areas were already inhabited by different kind of groups but how did they succeed it's what we want to look at what helped them to succeed in trying to take over these areas and invading east africa uh, that's our best interest and uh, that's what we want to look at now so point number one we are saying uh, this group was well trained they were warlike uh, war warriors and they were good trained compared to the areas where they migrated people they found in such regions were weak and uh, they were easily driven out so this helped them to invade and settle in these areas that we have just seen the Wufipa regions the Songhea regions uh, the Zambia regions the Malawi regions mentioned them the other point is they were determined and dedicated to do this because they didn't want to go back initially the area was hostile the area had a lot of instabilities the kwazulu natal caused by the king shaha so they were forced to move and thus they were determined not to go back so whatever was in their way they were not ready to bow down they were determined to take over so this helped them to invade east africa uh, the other is experience in warfare having exposed to to the great king shaka uh, uh of the zulu people who had a great army and the great fighting tactics so this when they brought it to east africa it was no match to the east africans so they were great uh warriors and they were experienced in warfare so this helped them also to invade east africa and take over parts of east africa we mentioned about the great leaders uh, uh the good leaders that they had motivation and positive leaders the zwangi Ndava, the maputopi uh, leaders that led these people the muzulikazi the great leaders that moved this mass group of people from kwazulu natal to this region you can't just underestimate it to lead such a mass and then move to different parts of the region uh, that explains how good they were so this also helped them to move and invade different areas in east africa uh the other one is uh the tactics the fighting the superior military tactics that they used as you can see in these photos the short stabbing spear actually got from the the, the, the zulu people the shield this 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 was no match to, to 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 east africans and the people in the malawi and this other region of zambia and mozambique so they were great uh, they had serious fighting tactics the cow horn copped from the zulu people uh the the, the barefoot and then this shield so this helped them to invade and take over part of east africa the other one is affecting fighting weapons as you can see uh we have these shields here we have this short stabbing spear instead of this long one that you throw and you become a little vulnerable to an enemy this one was just short you just stab and stay with it move forward move forward so these weapons also help them to take over this part of uh, east africa another point was slave trade we see that uh, by the time they came around this area east africa was uh, affected by slave trade most of the strong energetic people were being taken away and sold to the foreigners so this left the, the, the region a little uh, a little a little inferior and uh, open to attacks 
so this also explains why these people were able to invade East Africa around that time. So we, we look at also another factor known as surprise, at, surprise attacks. They just surprised the enemies. They didn't let them know that we are coming. So this also caused this and uh, helped them to invade. And then the other one is long distance trade. By that time people were involved in trade and the trade had taken over. So much emphasis was not given on protecting their regions but on trade so they were open to foreigners coming in and uh, enjoying and trading with them so this explains why i think why the nguni people are also able to take over these regions uh the other one is the scorched earth policy whoever resisted them they use that policy where they just come and burn everything and burn food and burn houses so as an enemy you are left with nothing so you're forced to surrender so this also forced the east african people to surrender to the nguni invasion and thus easily taking over and succeeding the invasion of east african regions so many factors that we've just seen here uh, explains uh, why these people the nguni uh, people were able to invade east africa and take over these regions as we've just seen earlier into our study above i want to say thank you for those who have been part of this video and have been able to watch this video from start to end and uh, i want to appreciate and ask you to those who are new to this channel to help us just subscribe to this channel and above all comment and like and leave a, a comment put on the notification for any new video that we shall upload thank you very much for watching uh, see you uh, in the next one